So I'm currently enrolled in this postgrad program and during one of the studio sessions, one of the professors commented this on my group's project. You know, it'd be pretty interesting if you guys represented this section, sort of like Renzo Piano does. Well, since our project was much more conceptual and wasn't fully designed yet, we couldn't really do it that way. So I got inspired and did it in my own way. The result is quite interesting and I thought you might enjoy watching this process and learn a thing or two along the way. Okay, so I knew more or less what Renzo Piano sections looked like and what were its interesting features, but it had been a while since the last time I looked at one. So the first step as always was to gather references. Now, and I'm not sure you can really call that piano's section style. Maybe other architects have done this in the past. And if you know others that did it, be sure to leave it in the comments below. But by searching on Google, you can find many projects with a similar representation style in the section. Now, today I'm gonna use Milanote to lay these images out and quickly analyze them with you. Milanote is the sponsor of this video and I got really interested in their platform that I'm daily using it to organize my thoughts and projects. Future courses, personal things, the postgrad program that I'm enrolled in and all. I usually have these, these notepads laying around on my table, but they can only go so far. So here I'm gonna create a new board and drag and drop all of these references that I saved. And as you can see, right off the bat, each section follows this similar style that I mentioned. And by the way, you can also copy anything from anywhere on the internet and paste it directly here. Now, one of the many cool things about Milanote is that you can share these with colleagues and use it as this collaborative creative space. So to wrap this segment, let me add comments and list the features that I find most important here. And remember that inspiration is about incorporating it into your style and workflow and not straight copying it. And what I'm really taking from, from this is the fact that all public spaces or active spaces are lit and it really feels like activities are happening there. It often shows that the sidewalk or the street extends into the building's ground floor and that's exactly what I tried to achieve here. Annotations, columns, file uploads and a lot more are available on Milanote. It's completely free to use and you only need to start paying if you need the extra items and file uploads that are not included on the free plan. So I'm gonna leave a link in the video description for you to check it out and test it. Thanks a lot Milanote for sponsoring this video and supporting Upstairs. Now let's get to Photoshop. Okay, so this is the base section. It was, the project was designed in ArchiCAD, but we were in a bit of a rush. We didn't have time to make it visual appealing out of ArchiCAD. So the quickest, quickest solution was to export it, roughly done as it was, and then clean it up in Illustrator, and then come here in Photoshop to finish it up. Especially for these more conceptual designs and at the very early stages of the project, process, workflow. Doing this way really saves you time because ArchiCAD or Revit or these BIM software are much more technical and require you to uh, give a proper solution to the design so that it can look it can look right. And then in Illustrator, you can, you can fake some stuff. You can, you know what I mean. And by the way, if you wanna see what I'm doing on this post-grad program, be sure to leave it in the comments below. I really don't know if I should share everything or not because the drawings, the di diagrams, renderings that I'm creating for this, uh, this postgrad are not really finished pieces as I'm used to sharing here on the videos, but nonetheless, it's a fun process and I think you guys might find it interesting and, and, and again, learn a thing or two from what I'm doing here. So back to the section, instead of redoing everything, I'm gonna share the file as is, sort of a, like a breakdown so that you can understand the bigger picture. So in this section, there are three things that we should take care of. The first one is the, the interior glow, the, the glow that, that comes from the street and enters the building. And that was done with watercolor brushes, uh, splatter brushes, and a soft brush so that it looks like the, the ground is glowing. The watercolors, I used uh, a rectangular marquee tool to help me with this selection, roughly done. Uh, the cool thing about doing this in Photoshop is that you, you don't have to be that precise, it's much more of an artistic, result that you're aiming for. So you can you can go outside boundaries and make him very artsy, if you will. So that's with watercolors and uh, splatter brushes. Then I added another splatter one on top of this. This, is, this was a custom brush that I created with small dots. It's this one, it's very simple, but it worked for this occasion and combined with the rectangular marquee tool, 
it's perfect. I didn't do with the color I had in mind because I really didn't know what color this was, was gonna be. It's much wiser to do it on the group, on the folder. I'm gonna show you how. So then I finished with a with this subtle soft brush from, from the slab up to really finalize the highlight feature. And then you can double click on the, on the folder to go inside the, the layer style. And here, just apply a color overlay and it should do the trick. If you wanna do really, if you wanna go for the, the Renzo Piano style, you should aim for something yellowish. On the original section, it was more of the lighting that was featured. But here, again, it's my approach to the section. And I tested a bunch of options. I think the original one was green because the project had this green accent color. But here for the video, I'm sticking with yellow. So the first item is done. And the second one is human figures, people. This is gonna help give scale to the drawing and also emphasize the idea of a, of a lit interior space. I added the cutouts from the Isometric Diagrams Masterclass course. You don't have to worry about colors just yet. For example, I added every one of them in black, cars, cyclists, and some lines that are indicating some, some design decisions that we took. Everything in black, and if you wanna add color, just Go to the layer style, either double click on, on the folder or go to the blending options of the folder and add a color overlay. And I thought the, the colored human figures were looking pretty good, but now that I'm looking at the black ones, I think I'm gonna stick with it. So that was the second one, but now for the third item, really to finalize this drawing, and I think this makes a whole lot of difference, is to add subtle shadow below the individual cut elements. There are multiple ways to do this, but I think the easiest probably is to create a new layer and we're gonna use the marquee, the rectangular marquee tool to make rough selections above the elements that we wanna add shadows. Doesn't have to be that precise, but just, just paint with any color. I'm gonna choose something that stands out here so that, that you can see where I'm painting. Take your time, but don't be too picky with, with the precision. Okay, so this is really roughly done, as, as you can see, but it doesn't matter that much. Now you're gonna take the fill out of this, not the opacity, but the fill, then go into the blending options of this layer. The blending options really solve a lot of the things that we need to do here. They are very versatile. And you can copy the same settings that I'm using, but the trick here is to make it very subtle. Don't overdo it because it's gonna look weird. And the second tip is to add a bit of noise. We usually leave it at zero, but for some reason, I think the noise just ties everything together. So I'm using the multiply blend mode, but that doesn't really matter. Normal works just the same. I'm giving a slight angle here so that it shows a bit of on the side, but usually 90 degrees works fine. Increase the size a bit. You can play with this, but I think zero on the size just looks weird and wrong. Well, in reality, the shadow wouldn't exist, but if you take a look far away, on and off, well, I think it's still too strong, but maybe 20 something percent, increase the shadow a bit. It's just really, really subtle, so that the, these cut elements, they, they pop out. And on the areas that you didn't get quite right, you can come here and clean it up and make it look neat and play with the settings until you find really the result you're looking for. I don't want any shadows going below this, uh, below the ground here. So I'm, I'm gonna make a mask on everything, but not on the layer because that won't really affect. So you gotta make a group and then a mask that's gonna hide everything and that solves the issue. So that's it guys, really simple. But again, it was the process that I used during the, the couple of weeks that we had to develop this, this project. And when you're in a rush, you need to find solutions that are gonna suit your needs and make you finish the image the best way you can. Okay, so if you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments below. I'll do my best to get to everyone. Give this video a like if you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on future videos. And if you wanna continue your study on architectural representation, here's a video I did a while back on elevations.